is Don Sheridan. He's out of this month. He's digital director of the National Archives. I'm going to speak to Sajay today. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, uh, I've worked at the National Archives for um, uh, uh, just under 10 years, it's been since then. And up until um, a couple of months ago, most of my effort and energy has been to provide high quality free public access to your. Um, and I have a new role and a new job, um, which is very exciting. <coughs> And that's still just two challenges that we have as an organisation. One is to capture the digital record of government, but it's to find ways in which we can engage with the information that we have. Um, and I come at this um, very much with um, a strong open this ethos and ethic. Um, and as part of our own strategy, Archives Inspire, um, a strong belief in the value of collaboration around historical sources of information. Now, now the government has been pretty keen on, um, uh, and the previous government was keen on open data and before that. Um, and as a, uh, as a civil servant, I've had the opportunity to work in several of um, open data policy initiatives. And you might be wondering, um, why is the government looking this space? What's in it for the UK? Um, and there are three benefits, um, writ large. First is um, open data, that's data that anybody can access, use, and share. Anybody can access, use, or share. Um, is good for the economy. Um, uh, when companies reuse government data or reuse other sources of data and they make products and services, the economy is better. Um, it's good for society. Um, many of the things that we want to um, understand about the world or do involves bringing together information from different places and combining it, connecting it, linking it. Um, and open data provides the playing field, if you like, upon which that wonderful game of collaboration and mixing and combining and searching different sources of data um, can happen. So it's a big um, benefit for society and um, um, also for the environment too. Um, the Department of Environment, DEFRA, um, are releasing 8,000 data sets over the next um, two years um, to help people uh, uh, better understand if they're farmers, uh, what the floodplain looks like, and so on. So, um, really key benefits this from, from open data in general. Now, opportunity is collaboration. A world where data is in silos, in walls, is a world of missed opportunity. And open data is how we provide a way in which, whilst retaining own, um, the government retains ownership of its open data, and individuals who make available their information, their intellectual property as open ownership. But, through licensing, through having a common and how the information can be made available, the collaboration can happen around the data set or around multiple data sets without ownership having to change. Um, and um, it's the opportunity for collaboration within the sector and across the sector exciting about um, and data being uh, academia, government, um, we have the chance to um, work together in a way that 
um, it's not really applicable. Um, around um, consistent licensing that allows shares. And now, um, the UK government has about the license fees for its information, and it's called the Open Government License. And it's a thing that the National Archives government as a whole, so um, crown copyright material um, is, um, uh, when it's being made openly available, it's made available under the Open Government License. And that, that license has been designed to be interoperable with some of the open data licenses people are using for open data. Um, so that you can easily mix some government data with um, policy thinking that's happening very much that um, we want people to exploit and use our data. Um, and we want them to do that around interoperable licenses that enable the collaboration and enable sharing. In my previous job as head of legislation services, um, I had responses. And one of the problems we had was we didn't have, frankly, enough people to keep track of all of the changes that were happening to legislation, and particularly after devolution. Um, um, so if you have more parliaments and assemblies modifying the statute book, which changes more quickly, and we didn't have more people to do the work. So we adopted an operating model. Um, we figured that um, if people were reusing our data, they'd have a stake in helping us improve it. And we created a program participation outside of government following particular editorial practices and processes and with some help to contribute in maintaining the government's legislation database um, um, and that, making something that was better for users but also available for other people to um, reuse put into their own systems and develop their own services and on that we've seen a number of interesting types of innovation, different types of both commercial product, academic research, that common platform. Um, and in particular, by encouraging the most we found that companies are being willing to invest in the help and make it better. Because they found it um, it guarantees success, the longevity and the quality of the information that we have. Um, and for me, that kind of story of participation and collaboration around open data, underpinned by information to be shared, that those changes, the information to be shared at real scale, um, it is an amazing opportunity. I think it's an amazing the kind I know you can, but I'm um, and, um, I'm really looking forward to um, further, further conversations about how to collaborate um, in the open data future um, that awaits us. Um, I'm really happy and I'm sticking around while so if you want to chat to me then I'm um, do call you